Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Ellie Johnston. I'm the Climate and Energy Lead at Climate Interactive. Excited for you to join us for second week of uh, the Mastering Inroads series. Um, let, me, let I'll let a few people, a few more people join. People are jumping in. Um, if you're just joining, uh, jump into the chat. Uh, give us your name, where you're coming from. Um, I'm sitting here in uh, California in the uh, Sierras and it's pretty warm here. We're, uh, it's a week of hot temperatures, We're supposed to have uh, lots of record breaking temperatures this week, unfortunately. And there's uh, about a hundred miles north of me, there's a fire that's burning. Uh, so that's on my mind. Uh, I know different climate impacts. It's already been a pretty extreme year in some places for people. Um, but uh, glad that you all are here and shared in this common effort of figuring out what we're gonna do about climate change and continue to build on the efforts out there. All right, uh, thanks everyone for writing into the chat. Uh, we'll get started here in just a minute. Let's see, it's a couple minutes after. Um, and if you weren't here last week, um, one thing that we did at the very beginning that I thought was pretty powerful uh, was for everyone to say hello in the, the, their favorite language or their language of their choice. Um, what we'll do is we'll unmute everyone and it's gonna be a little chaotic for a second. Um, so say hello and then uh, everyone will go on mute and uh, then we'll kick things off and I'll tell you what's in store for today. So why don't we get things started? Um, uh, yes, mean. Uh, can you unmute everyone? And then on the count of three, three, two, one. Hello. 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 Namaste. Hello. Doing good. Hello. Hope everyone's fine. Hello. Hello. Awesome. Hello. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Just a fun Hello. moment. <laughs> Hello. Hello. All right, let's put everyone. Great. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. That was fun. Uh, heard a lot of namaste is out there. Heard a lot of hellos. And I know there is a bunch of other languages mixed in there, too, uh, which is wonderful. Um, also, just a reminder. Um, Enroads is available in a bunch of different languages. And actually, I have exciting news. So today um, is every month we release a new version of Enroads. And today, actually, we just release Enroads in Arabic. Uh, so if you go to Enroads today and you look under the language menu, you'll now see Arabic under the list of um, all the languages available. So we're really excited about that and uh, very grateful for the, the um, translators that have worked really hard to figure out how to um, translate inroads and make sure it's all set up so that makes sense for Arabic speakers. So that's a cool new development out there. Um, and why don't I tell you all a little bit more about what we have in store for today. So uh, one thing that's gonna be exciting today is we have a panel of inroads climate ambassadors. We're gonna tell you about um, exciting moments that they've had in running inroads event, impactful moments. We'll turn to them in a minute. Then after that, I'll give a quick overview of the Inroads Climate Workshop. Again, kind of reinforcing some of the things that came up in the videos that you all saw um, and thinking back about that mini workshop uh, that Drew ran last week um, during the live session. I know maybe not all of you all were there for the live session last week, but if you were um, thinking about how he set that up and what were the different components to that. Then I'm gonna um, speak to the weekly challenges. Um, some of you all did that. That was it was exciting to see those posted on the community pages, and uh, we've got more community challenges uh, in store coming up. Um, and then we're gonna have uh, breakout group discussions. So within the hour, uh, we'll break everyone up into groups of say four to five people, and um, for a discussion question there. And then we'll have time for question and answer. And just like we did last time, uh, the 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 session will end formally at the top of the hour, but if you have time to stick around, we'll kind of have more informal time to network, to connect with each other. Uh, we can open up the breakout rooms again uh, if people want to get into smaller groups and just see who's out there and uh, chat with people and meet new, new, new faces. 
um, and also can continue to answer other questions as they come up. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Caroline, um, who is going to uh, introduce the Inroads Climate Ambassadors we have. And as always, uh, feel free to write into uh, the chat. Um, we will look for questions there. And if you have any larger questions or that kind of thing, you can always uh, write, write to us at support at climateinteractive.org too. Uh, but Caroline, why don't you take it away here? Thanks, Ellie. Um, so we wanted to ask a few of our ambassadors. So these are people who have, uh, as we've explained, gone through this training previously, and they've been working with us to run uh, inroads events all over the world. Uh, today we're focused on uh, the workshop a little more, but we're asking what has been a powerful moment for you during an inroads event. Um, and Laura, if you could speak first, that would be wonderful. Sure. So for me, the most uh, powerful moment of, of any workshop, whether it's Zoom or live, has been when um, at the end, when I conclude. And typically I have what I call the linger honors. And those are people who want to just um, have a discussion afterwards. And what I've noticed the discussion always goes to is they want to share how they're already a part of the climate solution. So either they have a neighbor who has a biochar farm or they're super excited to learn that they have insulated their house and that was a high leverage um, climate solution or they just bought an EV or they work in a nuclear plant. But probably one of the biggest um, uh, a powerful moments for me is when I ask someone who I've known for a long time to come and talk um, or to help me with a Zoom, transitioning from live to Zoom during COVID. And during that, we've never talked about climate change or advocacy and, at the, and he works in the timber industry. And at the end, we had started having a discussion regarding um, timber versus steel and buildings. And that's led to further and further discussions about climate change solutions. And at the end of this month, he is going to actually attend uh, the Georgia Climate Conference with me, which I never would have expected in a million years that that to occur. So that was very powerful. So I always leave at the end of every workshop, be it Zoom or be it live, as much time as possible for that debriefing process. And that's been incredibly powerful. That's awesome. Thank you, Laura. That was a great story. Uh, Radna, if you'd like to go next. Bandung, Indonesia. And for me, the powerful uh, moment during the workshop uh, and roads, I think uh, it's the experience of my students. So I ran the workshop and roads during this pandemic. So this is the, the most uh, unique experience for me and my student because at the end of the workshop, they put the chat and I asked them, how do you uh, imagine the world in 2100? So they put all those uh, opinion in the chat. And I think that's the most powerful moment because uh, it's something like collaboration, collective action, and it gives me the energy to move on uh, because this pandemic is really very hard for us. So I think it's uh, my experience for this end road. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Sean, if you'd like to go next. Uh, yeah, I have uh, two fairly salient moments. One was shortly after I started using the, the end roads simulator with proper intent and I've for a long time been the, the shouty pushy guy about sustainability uh, giving everybody a headache about why all this needs to happen and why we need to be more proactive and all that and when I was working in Trinity we had this great big 48 inch screen in one side of the cafeteria uh, which was ostensibly a video link with one of the other buildings but I put En-ROADS up on that and I just left it there and I, I talked to everybody about it and, uh, and anytime anything would come up, I would just slide my chair back and I'd go and I'd, I'd tweak it in En-ROADS. And within about a week, everybody was playing with it. Everybody was playing with it. And they were all getting a real kick out of it. And the other thing then was only a couple of months back, I was asked to facilitate a workshop for the University of Lorraine in France. Now I'm in Ireland. 
And I don't have particularly good French. I'm not useless, but I wouldn't be teaching a class in French or anything. But it turned out that they had a cohort of 22 students from all over the world, mostly developing nations. So it was a really, really, uh, really interesting, a great privilege to actually get to interact with these people. We had people from Iran, Brazil, Colombia, Nigeria. They were all there. And I was asking them at the end of the workshop what the climate was like in their place. What were they seeing? How was the action going there? And it was just really insightful for everybody, particularly for us on our thrones in the developed world who don't regularly enough get an insight into what it's like everywhere else to, to be able to sit back and get that bit of view. So it was really, really good, really enlightening, really connecting. That's me, thank you. Thanks, thanks, Sean. Uh, and last, I'd love to hear from Jillian. Hello, everyone. Well, one of the, uh, both the, the most powerful, but also the most uh, vulnerable moments for me as a speaker is when I invite people to voice their inner experience near the end of the workshop after giving them 60 seconds to reflect on, on the world they've just created with En-ROADS and really share feelings, thoughts, perspective shifts. Uh, that's, that's when I have to give away my power as a speaker to let people share their worlds. And I have to count to uh, 10 waiting for somebody to speak up. And they always come out with the most beautiful sh and inspiring shares. It just blows me away. Um, one person uh, just started speaking and she said, well, I really thought before this, that we were doomed, just as a species, completely doomed. And now I have hope. I see that it will definitely take effort, but that it is possible um, to get below two degrees and to watch somebody make that shift from hopelessness to some sense of grounded optimism for the future is really why I, I enjoy doing these trainings and why being an En-ROADS ambassador can be so impactful. Thank you, that's so great. Thank you all who came and joined us and shared. Um, hopefully we'll be hearing more from you either later in the session or later in the training series, but thanks. And I'll pass it back to Ellie. Yeah, thanks. Um, wow, those are some powerful moments. And uh, if you all have questions too for um, uh, some of these En-ROADS climate ambassadors, uh, feel free to write them in the to the chat. They might be able to see them there, or we'll have some question a question period later on uh, if some of them are able to stick around. Um, that makes me think of like one of them. There have been a lot of really impactful moments that I've had with with En-ROADS, but uh, it takes me back to so we we had En-ROADS in kind of a development version where we weren't really sharing it widely with the world for many years, and I remember like me and Drew and our team was pretty small then. Uh, we would just do a lot of one-on-one -on -one kind of events here and there. Um, and I did this event uh, with some people who were leading a hedge fund. Um, and I showed up, I'm not, I don't have a big finance background, but showed up and presented En-ROADS to them. And they had a very solid picture in their minds of what they thought it would take to address climate change. And in this case, uh, these uh, finance, uh, they were all guys, these finance guys thought it was only going to take cheap renewable energy and electric cars, then we would fix climate change. So I showed up with En-ROADS and gave them the background of how we built the simulator, kind of that establishing credibility um, video that you all might have seen uh, in, the, in the training series so far, and we tested cheap renewable energy. We tested electric cars and it didn't get to those Paris Agreement goals of limiting warming to well below two degrees. And there was just this moment of silence where I was like, what's going to happen? Are they going to, do they, are they going to dismiss me uh, like and this tool that we have? Or are they going to, or are we going to start seeing uh, a shift in their models? And you know, they're sitting back in their chairs like this. And I see this, the, the, the most senior partner kind of pull forward and pull up his chair. And he's like, okay, well, let's do something about fossil fuels. 
And it was just like, at that moment, you could then begin to see the wheels turn of like, oh, this challenge is big, but there are actions out there and beginning to kind of think through all those different um, actions, which for me was like that powerful moment of seeing that uh, mental shift in someone's mind. Um, so I hope you all um, that are joining this training get to see those moments too. It's, it's very rewarding um, as, a, as a facilitator and somebody who just cares, cares about uh, taking action on this issue and what we can do about it. Um, so from here, I wanted to step back and I'm gonna share my screen again. And I wanted to just kind of do a quick review again of uh, the components of the um, Inroads Climate Workshop to just really kind of uh, solidify the, the different aspects that we see in it. And again, thinking about the little miniature workshop that Drew ran last week, or uh, some of you all may have seen our other, other workshops. We tend to run them about monthly uh, for hundreds and hundreds of people, or maybe you've seen a smaller one led by another Inroads Climate Ambassador. Um, but the, the, the main pieces to think about when you think about what, is, what does this event entail? Like, what are we talking about here? First, of course, just a welcome introductions and that kind of thing. Then uh, the, 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 the first thing you're really doing is introducing inroads, talking about what it is. And here, let's, um, I'll show you all inroads just to um, emphasize this. And so when I'm introducing inroads, the main things I, I hit on are one, you know, what is it? So this is a system dynamics model uh, built by the team at Climate Interactive and MIT using the best available science. Um, we're pulling from data from the IEA, the EIA, the World Bank, the IPCC, many other sources. And what you're looking at here, so when I do the introduction of inroads, I wanna make sure that as a facilitator, I'm orienting people to what they're looking at. There is a lot going on here. And if you don't start slow by introducing the, where people should be focusing their eyes, you can get a little lost. Um, so first I'll say, you know, here on the left, we're looking at global sources of primary energy. Uh, this darkest color here at the bottom, this is oil, coal. Uh, then on top in red, we have oil, then natural gas in blue, green is representing renewables, then pink is bioenergy on top of that is nuclear. And this graph is showing us from the year 2000 out to 2100, what we see in terms of uh, the global energy mix, if we're not taking significant more action on climate change. Then uh, a number of sources of carbon dioxide and uh, other greenhouse gases lead to, to what we're seeing here on the right, which is greenhouse gas net emissions. Uh, again, this graph goes from the year 2000 up to 2100. In this scenario, we're seeing an expected temperature change of 3.6 uh, degrees by the end of the century. So that kind of grounds people in what they're looking at. And then I'll, I'll mention, okay, so at the bottom, we have all these different types of actions we can take on climate change. These sliders, we can move them and I'll demonstrate by moving them so that people can see this isn't a video. I've had, I don't know how many times I've had this happen where somebody, I'll be talking to somebody about doing an event or presentation, they'll, they'll say, okay, that looks like a really cool video. Can you just send it to me? And it's like, no, this is interactive. This is a wholly different way of thinking about how we can engage uh, in a conversation. Uh, we're using a tool in this case. So those are kind of, that's kind of the way I'll set things up. And then the next piece of that is that um, you want to get people engaged and you want to do this quickly. Um, and so thinking about what the hook might be and we'll, we'll shift this but generally it's a question of like what are some of the what what is a climate action that is on your mind that you would like to test in inroads sometimes we've framed this in different ways like particularly maybe you're talking to an audience at, that's uh, at, at a city level and they're thinking about city climate action so there i might take a strategy of saying like what are the climate actions that you all are taking within this community that you wanna see the whole world take? Because remember again, that inroads is global. So we can play this, we can do this kind of what if exercise for people who are thinking about climate change at lower levels and say, okay, let's explore the, the actions and say, okay, if everyone was um, 
maybe maybe the community is putting in a solar panel. So what if we said everybody around the world was putting in more solar panels? Then we would move that renewable slider uh, to test that kind of hypothetical what if and prompt that on people's minds. As, we, as we're testing uh, slider by slider, there's a few different components that I'll, I'll again emphasize to just keep in mind. So you're building this scenario collaborative, collaboratively with the group. Um, so before even moving the slider, um, and you might remember this from last week or another workshop, uh, Drew did this with the poll everywhere feature where you went to that poll everywhere site and um, he said, okay, what temperature do you think that this change will result in? And then, you know, people voted and they said, oh, 3.3 3 degrees or 3.3 3 degrees or something like that. And uh, people mentally simulated. So again, this is how we learn. This is uh, the way we're gonna, people solidify knowledge. They test it, uh, they come up with a theory, test it and see if it, see if it was correct. Um, so people mentally simulate, we, we ask them what, the, what, it, what they expect to happen and then we move the slider. And so whatever the action was that was prompted, more solar panels, a carbon price, energy efficiency, planting trees, whatever it was, uh, move that slider. And then when you move the slider on inroads, um, then you want to discuss and ask people what's going on here. Um, look at look at the scenario. So, for example, if we go back to the main slide, uh, main, main, and say we say uh, someone had proposed electric cars, for example, I would ask, say, okay, how, how much of a difference in temperature do you think just moving electric cars would be? People would shout out or raise their hands and or um, vote somehow, or just maybe quietly reflect on what they think uh, electric cars might do. And then we move it and we say, okay, uh, wow, that only moved, and we hit the replay last change button, 3.6 goes to 3.5. Wow, was that more or less than what people expected? In this case, we only see a 10th of a degree of difference. So that might be less than what people are, are expected. So this is your, then the opportunity for you as a facilitator to introduce some of these dynamics in inroads. And I know you all are, many of you all are just getting started. And in the next two weeks of video content and quizzes and the modules that we're gonna be releasing, we're really gonna go deep into a lot of these different dynamics, what all these sliders mean so that you can better kind of develop those talking points and uh, know for yourself, okay, why, what's going on here with electrification? Well, one thing that's going on is that the energy mix. So if I replay this change, when you have an electric car, what it's doing is it's shifting over from that internal combustion engine car that you might have otherwise, uh, which would run on oil, uh, to one that runs on electricity. But where do we get electricity from? And so that's then the question. And so we don't see that temperature come down so substantially just by itself because the electric car is just using whatever is in the available energy mix. So there's your talking point. Um, and then the other thing too, is to then prompt a question and to, to, to get people thinking about different equity considerations that might come up. Or you could take an approach of talking about different co-benefits. Why, what, what is the advantage of, a, of electric cars uh, versus other things? Are there opportunities for better employment, for better health, health outcomes that can come with moving a slider? And what are some of the considerations in policy design that maybe aren't captured in within inroads, but are important to keep at the forefront of our minds as we're thinking about which kinds of climate actions will be highest leverage, will be most um, uh, you know impactful and uh, politically feasible, and things like that. Um, and that's where you can really, uh, through as a facilitator, create a really rich. Um, complete experience, rather than we don't want we, we don't we don't want people just kind of falling back on the model and saying, okay, well we moved it uh, to 3.5, then next next slide there. And so uh, it's it's really thinking about what are the different components. So as a facilitator, we can we can help guide people's thinking along here. Um, that those are kind of the the big points to think about as you build a scenario, and then. Um, surprises and the summary of insights, and then also this debrief section. You heard uh, from the Inroads Climate Ambassadors, we just heard from that those were some of the most powerful moments uh, within an Inroads Climate Workshop. That point where you 
ask people for a minute of silence. And like Jillian was talking about the challenge that that can be as a facilitator to step back. You're, 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 not, you're not the person with knowledge that needs to, to, to speak to, to everyone. You're, you're now listening and you're guiding this conversation and kind of shaping the mood of the room. Uh, people will share really poignant insights at this point. And that's where you can hear people's reflections. Oh, I didn't think about this. Oh, wow, it is possible to address climate change, but wow, look at all of the different actions that are needed. Um, so that's, uh, make sure you save time. It's easy to get caught in just showing inroads and just moving the sliders around and not taking that time at the end, but really, really, really challenge you in all of your inroads events to slow down and give time uh, for the debrief at the end. And sometimes this could, can be quite long because this is where the discussion happens and where the insights can come up and also where if it's appropriate, there can be a call to action. You all can, as a group, um, can think about next steps if it's, a, if it's a group that's working together on some kind of an effort. We've heard of all different kinds of things come out of uh, events that we've held from uh, you know, a classroom of college students who, after going through an experience, has said, oh, wow, we want to form a campus organization. We don't have any kind of uh, climate action organization on our campus. Let's do something. And then that has led to really big actions or um, uh, faith communities that I can think of uh, a case where a, a church in the Midwestern United States um, participated in, a, in, in a, an event and then after it, they pulled together and decided that they were gonna support some charity efforts um, abroad internationally. And so that was one of the things that prompted their thinking um, after experiencing. So oh, a huge range of different things from students to faith communities to uh, businesses, all, all different kinds of things. Um, so take time for that debrief at the end and, and tailor it to whatever audience that you're working with. We kind of give you all this form uh, and structure to use, but then really this is not something that we, uh, th that we feel is super rigid. If you have an audience, if you're integrating this into a, an event or a conference or a class, uh, you may wanna change things around, uh, shift it up. Um, and we totally encourage you to do that. Uh, we make the materials available. Feel free to edit them. They're under a Creative Commons license. So you can, you can change them around and then uh, send them back to us. We love to see all the different uh, ways people customize the experience. Um, so just, I wanted to cover that is just to, again, to break down what those different pieces of the Inroads Climate Workshop are. Um, you can go back to, to the materials in the, uh, the learning platform to, to emphasize that again. Um, but from here, um, oh, there's the call to action there at the end. Um, I wanted to turn to the weekly challenge because so many of you all um, posted into the community space on the learning platform and, uh, and wanted to just spend a moment to, to, to talk about that. So if you remember um, over in, let's see, um, over in the learning platform, we have this challenge. So uh, there in module two, um, at the end, there was this challenge. Okay, open up inroads, create a scenario. What is one thing that surprised you or that you thought was interesting as you moved the sliders? Um, so I was so uh, fascinated to see all the different things that came up. Um, many of you all posted into the community space. Um, so again, when you're, when you're just signed in to uh, the learning platform, learn.climateinteractive.org, uh, you, you land here and then you click this tab up here that says community. Some of you all have found it and it's, um, it's, there's lots, lots of discussion happening uh, and it's been so great to see. Thank you all to everyone who's jumped in and starting to connect. Um, and I was just scrolling through here this morning. I hadn't, hadn't got a chance to dig into um, all of the different uh, responses that everyone had written, but take some time to, you can see them yourselves. Um, but one of the things that jumped out to me as I scrolled through, um, the different uh, scenarios that people had shared, um, Luis and Mary Ellen and uh, um, lots of different people. There's all, all different kinds of discussions in here. So they're all mixed together, um, Carla, um, was that many of you all just saw the challenge. 
how hard it is to create a below two degree. Some of you even took on the challenge of like, okay, what is it gonna take to create a scenario that limits warming to 1.5 degrees and saw how challenging that was. And so that was one insight I saw come up again and again and again. Um, another one too, I saw people with coming up saying that they were surprised too at the, the limited amount of action that afforestation uh, made or deforestation, that component to uh, forestry and, and how that factors in. And I, I was, as I was thinking about this, I was one graph that I think really shows um, this kind of case around why deforestation and afforestation is limited is if I go to this miniature graphs view here, go to greenhouse gas emissions and removals. And this is a stacked graph. So at the bottom in green, it's showing land use CO2 emissions. Then we have the energy CO2 emissions, then F gases, then methane, the nitrous oxide. And so here you can really see the proportion of total global greenhouse gas emissions uh, that the land use sector is. So certainly we have to stop deforestation. It's a huge challenge, particularly due to biodiversity. Um, and, but, and when we think about those emissions from, uh, for climate change, if we reduce that and we say, okay, what if we stopped deforestation say by the year 2050? And you can see that reduction, it's very slight. Um, here, I'll change, I'll give you all another graph to view land, uh, what am I looking for, at land use emissions. So here's our land use emissions and then they're dropping to about zero uh, there in 2050 or so. And you can see that here. So that makes, when I replay the change, go from 3.6 to 3.5. Deforestation, it's part of the challenge. Uh, we have this expression, it takes more than one seed to plant a garden. If your work or you, the area you are in leads you to being able to impact change around deforestation, by all means, keep working hard on it. That's not what we're saying. Um, in the global picture, it's one piece of the challenge that we need to address. And where we're thinking about uh, what it's going to take, you know, thinking back to that story of the, the, uh, the finance leaders that I was working that I was working with, they had in their mind that climate change was only about two things. Um, so if you hear somebody saying, well, climate change is only about this, and they say deforestation, you can say yes, and, and it's also about uh, where these energy CO2 emissions come from, where the F gases, methane emissions, and the nitrous oxide emissions come from too. So that was one insight that I saw um, people uh, mentioning. There are others buried in here, and I encourage you all to jump in. Uh, feel free to comment on other, uh, on other people's, like some of you all already have. Uh, that's wonderful. And I love the diff hearing the different perspectives of where people are coming from as well um, on those uh, different community insights. Um, one thing too, I'll mention. So uh, this morning we just released the next module. So you all can access what is module four. This is a whole series of different videos um, about each of the sliders. So we can go in deeper into what we actually are talking about when we mention net z new zero carbon or carbon removal technologies. Um, so if you're new to these topics and you wanna understand how they work within inroads in particular, uh, definitely go through all the videos and check out the quizzes. And the challenge we have for you all uh, in the next week, and honestly, we'll give you two weeks for this, but in the next week, think about who is someone that you could show inroads to. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's someone you live with, uh, maybe it's a small group of people. The, this doesn't need to be like a big production effort. Uh, sit down at your kitchen table, sit down you know, um, at a cafe, wherever, and show someone in inroads, introduce it to them, um, and create a scenario together. Um, and then tell us how it went. I would love to see pictures if anyone takes a picture uh, you don't have to, but we love to see pictures. Um, uh, how did it go? Um, and and share it. You can share into the community space here. I believe you can share pictures uh, in here if you want, or just leave a comment. And then also uh, register your event. So this is a big component too of how we keep up with how many people out there are using inroads, and uh, it's a way for us to tell our funders like, hey, there's a lot of people that are really excited about this. Um, is that we really need you all to 
register the events you run with En-ROADS. So when you do the challenge in the next week or two, uh, make sure to register your event. And uh, hopefully we can share some pictures next week or in two weeks uh, of people's experiences and how they went. Um, so I'm really excited to see how that goes. I'm gonna pause here because I was just talking for a good chunk of time. Um, uh, Janet or Yazzie, do you all see anything that I should address? Any questions that came up uh, that I can just tackle really quick um, that were relevant to uh, the challenge and, and or the inroads format? Um, if not, we can, sh we can shift over into the breakout rooms and handle more questions at the end. I think we've answered most of them in the chat. Um, if people have more questions, we might have time at the end or just send us an email at support at climateinteractive.org. Perfect, thanks, Janet. Okay, great. So at this point, what we wanted to do is give you all a chance to interact with each other, to be able to um, connect and also to practice and start uh, figuring out how to, what the words are and choosing the words to think about um, uh, how you might engage someone with En-ROADS. So what we're, what we're gonna ask you to do is to first think to yourself, think about where you want to use En-ROADS um, in the world. Maybe you're a professor thinking about engaging your class, or maybe you have colleagues, uh, maybe you're working in a business setting, you're, you're in a community group, um, you have access to decision makers in your local government, whatever it may be, or maybe you're just, you just wanna engage your friend who you know, is, uh, isn't thinking about climate change and you wanna help them think more about it, uh, whatever it may be. Think about where you wanna use inroads and then imagine you are talking to this person or talking to a friend or colleague about what you wanna do. How would you explain how inroads can be helpful? So what we're gonna do, break you all into groups of four or five people and in those small groups, I want you all to take turns. First, do quick introductions, you know, say hello, uh, where you're from, that kind of thing. And then somebody uh, step forward and be the first person and just quickly, uh, you know, we have this phrase, this, the, give your elevator speech, how inroads can be helpful. Um, or just very succinctly, how would you explain to somebody why, the, why you're using this tool um, and how would, how would it be useful uh, to their work? Um, and then from there, we'll take say 15 minutes or so. Um, we won't have a whole lot of time. So hopefully you all can get to as many people in the group as possible, but I realize time may be limited here. Um, and I hope you all can learn too from each other of thinking about the ways in which um, people can, can talk about the, the, the impact of this. Uh, so at this point, um, Yasmeen, will you, would you be able to um, open up the breakout rooms? And so what's going to happen is that you're going to be prompted to join a breakout room. Uh, select join, and then you'll be transported off to a new break, a breakout room with a small group of people. Um, and so keep in mind uh, this prompt. How would you explain how inroads can be helpful? Um, maybe we can send a message into the breakout rooms to send, send uh, that prompt again um, and, uh, and run from there. So uh, Yasmin, will you open up the breakout rooms and um, we'll go off to them. Bit of an experiment, we're learning. <laughs> so uh, I hope, hope it wasn't all silence. <laughs> um, great, so I'm gonna share my screen again. And um, I want you all, I, I'm just curious, did any insights or questions come up in the breakouts that anyone wants to share? Um, write them in, go to the Poll Everywhere oh, the poll. site. Um, rather than, uh, I think the chat will get a little out of control. So if you go to pollev.com slash climate inter 935, uh, yes, I mean, we post that into the chat. And so the link uh, will be in there. And um, yeah, just curious, um, anyone uh, write in, write in to poll everywhere. Um, and and I'll, I'll just also mention while uh, everyone's pulling that up and rejoining from the breakout rooms um, uh, that 
you all, as you think about facilitating, you know, sometimes we're running events in person and you can just take hands um, and you're doing it with a small group. So discussion is easy. Um, we've been experimenting with this website, this platform called Poll Everywhere as a way of handling when we're doing really large events, but you don't need to, you don't need to pull out all the, all these different kinds of uh, uh, tech features. I've seen a lot of success of just people using Zoom, uh, sharing their screen, of sharing inroads and switching back and forth. Um, um, okay, so we have some things coming in. Did any insights? Yes, some insights came up. What are they? Tell us, tell us what they might be. Um, and uh, I see everyone had such different ideas as to where they could host events. That's great to see. Um, also, um, how might we effectively explain the local relevance of this global tool? That's a great point and one uh, that, that we're working with. So um, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but one way in which we, we find that inroads can have a lot of relevance into local settings is by playing out these what if scenarios. There are a lot of tools out there that um, local, state, regional, country uh, level decision makers use to shape scenarios. But there are, aren't that many tools that are as easy to use, that are just accessible and that you can pick up without a technical background. And so the way we explain like how this local television, how it's locally relevant is that it gives people the big picture of like, okay, addressing climate change, this is this global issue. And we're all working at our own little angle in the, in the, in the space that we work within. And so what we've seen is that um, uh, like a company, for example, uh, I can think of uh, one of our ambassadors uh, works at the company PepsiCo. And she talked about how, she's talked about how they've used the tool to look at how their corporate sustainability strategies, if the whole world took them, what, what are the areas in which they might be missing? So they went through their plans to address climate through the company and uh, identified all of the different uh, sliders that they were taking actions on and then saw some gaps, saw areas where, oh, wow, we're not doing anything about coal in our supply chain, for example, or could be anything, you know, and then thinking about that and then what, what further action that they could be able to take. Um, so that's definitely one way in which to think about how this can be locally relevant. How could, maybe it's even like my personal actions, how could if the whole world did what I've done, uh, would that make a difference? Would that be sufficient? I remember, this has been several years ago now, uh, but there was a student group at MIT who took the tool and said, okay, what if MIT, we, MIT just released, a, had released a climate plan and they said, okay, what if the whole world did what MIT was doing. And then they were able to show um, how, how much of an impact that, that would make. Um, so th there, are, there are ways to just kind of help shape um, the ways in which all of these different leverage points, all of these, these different ways we need to take action are important and look for those gaps and look for where th small actions are, uh, if, if magnified, could be a uh, high leverage. Um, all right. And oh, and then here I see how to not discourage well-minded individuals who love planting trees. Absolutely, we definitely need to uh, continue planting trees. There's a big, um, in the New York Times yesterday or the day before, they had a, a, a wonderful article about how important tree planting is to climate adaptation, uh, it, particularly in urban areas. We need to plant trees to help give us that uh, coverage, to give us shade as more and more areas are seeing record-breaking uh, heat waves and things like that, we're seeing those communities that have trees um, give people a place to stay cool. That's so important. Um, so definitely uh, don't, we don't want to um, throw out uh, really, really important ideas. And that's where entering into that conversation about what are the co-benefits that come with this and thinking about for what are all the reasons why uh, we need to take different actions. Um, okay, I see citizens can empower politicians to make hard choices and changes. Yeah, that's definitely a great insight that comes up here. I'll scroll down. Um, a few of us are concerned about popping the bubble of self-satisfaction for participants who are amping up personal action, which like planting, I can't read the whole thing here. Um, 
but this is something that you know one one of the things that comes up a lot within climate conversations is where we might take action so there's a lot of discussion of like oh if only you you know uh eat eat, eat your change your own diet or uh make this own personal choice in your shopping habits or whatever it may be um and that can be uh, that can be helpful um and really where inroads comes in and as one way you can kind of position how it's helpful is to think about uh how like inroads helps us to see the bigger picture to see the systemic interconnections of all of these different kinds of actions so it's a way to kind of keep this focus on um all of the ways in which we're in this kind of interdependent systems and the ways we might change them too um and where we might find leverage and so that's where we have a real emphasis around decision makers and shaping policies and that kind of thing and really hope you can find opportunities where are there people within your life who um, are in charge of making decisions that impact more than just uh yourself or uh different different people um and to think about how that can have influence so those changes can then ripple out lots of great answers in here um let's see I'll just scroll through and also I'm noting we've hit the top of the hour. Um, so I will also want to be sensitive to the time that you all have. If you need to drop off at this point, turn to the next thing in your day. Um, some of you all are up very late. Some of you are up very early in the morning, you know, go eat some food, uh, turn to the next thing in your day. Feel free to drop off. Um, uh, we'll stick around for a little bit longer if you do have time. Um, I'll, I'll scroll through some of these other uh, responses here. And then what we're going to do is uh, we'll open up the breakout rooms again. So if you, uh, and we'll, we'll reshuffle them this time so you can interact with different people, um, introduce yourselves. These will be informal. Um, there's no prompt or uh, any kind of guided discussion, but just if you want to introduce yourself and connect with other people um, around the world who are thinking about um things uh, around climate change will give you all that opportunity also um uh i can I'll stick around here in the main room and answer any questions that come up so um i'm gonna actually i'll i'll, I'll keep I'll, I'll read through some of what we have here and maybe um others on the team if you've seen questions um we can go back to those and answer them but uh yes man do you want to at this point open up the um open up the breakout rooms again you'll get a prompt to join a breakout room if you're not interested in joining the breakout room you can you can dismiss it and stay here in the uh the main room and uh if you need to go to something else today feel free to log off um we will post the recording of uh the the session um on the learning platform also check out all the new videos and quizzes that are just have just been, been made available today. Um, and we will also see you next week at this time. Uh, the Zoom link will stay the same. Uh, we'll be here uh, Thursday. It's 11 a.m. Eastern, 8, 8 a.m. Pacific, um, probably some other time wherever you are out there in the world. Um, uh, happy to have you all joining, but also um, following along with the quizzes and the videos. So people are moving into breakout rooms if they want. Um, if you, you can go down to your, um, the, the Zoom controls and join the breakout room. If you miss the prompt, um, there's, a, there's a button there and you can select uh, the breakout room to join if you want to be moved into it or um, uh, message Yasmin in the chat and she can assign you to a breakout room. Um, I'm gonna scroll back through these questions and I will actually, um Caroline were there any questions that came up that you saw here on this list or um that you saw in the chat that I could answer I reading and talking is a skill I haven't entirely mastered yet so it's a little tricky to read through these as I was as I was continuing to talk um anything that you saw come up um a quick uh logistical one I saw someone asking about the chat and if they could save it um if you'll email me i just actually dropped my email address in the chat i can send you the the chat file we're not sending it out but um if you wanted to see anything from there um a lot of people were just kind of reflecting around um 
the things you were saying about local versus global, um, you know, how much or what are our thoughts of whether we've tried to regionally um, disaggregate inroads. I haven't seen any questions recently. I don't know if anyone else on the team has that I've missed. Yeah, well, I'll touch on that question about uh, regional, regional modeling and that kind of thing. So this comes up a lot. People see inroads and say, oh, uh, where is the US version of this? Or where is the Brazil version of this? And so as, as a reminder, <laughs> um, our team is pretty small. We're like a team of 15 people. Um, building inroads took many, many years. And, um, and so we've gotten it, got it to this point where we can share it widely. And, and we're kind of running with that right now. We haven't yet found the right opportunity where it makes sense for us to put our technical modeling capacity into building a more local, more regional version of inroads. There's a lot of challenges that come up uh, when trying to model a um, specific country and in this kind of global question about climate change. For example, one question that um, is really tricky to tease apart is this question of leakage. So, for example, if uh, and and we see this in um, in areas where you have um, some smaller countries ne near each other that uh, one country takes action, say uh, takes really aggressive action to stop deforest illegal deforestation in their country. What happens is we see um, people moving across borders to continue that practice elsewhere. So how you know as a modeling team, our modelers would have to factor that in. How do we think about leakage? How would we think about if uh, you know the um, United States was to stop building, uh, you know, stop doing something, would that go other places? Um, and there are lots of brilliant people working on these challenges and capturing models uh, that at uh, at national levels, um, at state levels. Um, here in the United States, um, there's a group called Energy Innovation that has their own interactive tool that looks at US policy. That's something that's of interest to you. Um, there's another project out there called the Deep Decarbonization Project. They have done models at a national level uh, for a bunch of different countries. You could look up them too. Um, it's just a different approach. So we, um, we, we haven't made a regional model yet um, for with, the, with all of the dynamics that was captured within InRides. Maybe we will one day. Uh, we don't have a plan to though um, at the moment. Um, however, I will say we have another simulator. Some of you all may be familiar with this. Um, we haven't talked a lot about it. It's called Sea Roads. And Sea Roads does capture different regional differences. And what Sea Roads shows is it doesn't, it doesn't look at things like the energy mix or energy efficiency, um, but it's looking at what is the kind of uh, share of action that uh, China, that India, that the United States, that the other developed countries and the developing countries, what is their share in taking action uh, to address climate change? So we have used that model extensively uh, within the climate negotiations process. And for many years, uh, we were adding up all of the pledges that countries um, had put forward, the NDCs, and saying, okay, if every country was successful in fully implementing their NDC, where would that get us in terms of temperature outcome? That kind of analysis uh, used to be a real big focus of ours. There are other groups out there who are doing a really great job of that and have taken that even further than uh, we ever did. Uh, look to the groups like Climate Analytic, Analytics, the like Climate Action Tracker uh, for uh, the latest NDC analysis um, uh, and that kind of thing. And these kind of assessments of where current policies stand um, there, are, there are a lot of other great efforts out there. What, we, we, what we're really aiming to do is try and figure out how we can complement this, this space that has become increasingly crowded with all kinds of uh, climate efforts out there. And if we can point you to other resources, we certainly will. Um, and uh, maybe you all know of other resources that we haven't come across and can share those over in the community space. Um, other questions that have come up? Yeah, a few more have come in. Um, mm -hmm. First, this one was asked a few times early on, so I want to make sure we get to it. And if anyone doesn't know this or hasn't discovered this in the model yet, it's a little more technical, so no need to fully understand it. But Ellie, could you speak um, on what the impact of the clean electricity standard is um, when used alongside the carbon price in inroads? 
Um, yeah, like how they work together. Yeah, I think so. I think that's, it was a little vague, or Polly, you were writing it. If you had a more specific question, you could drop in there. But yeah, just like what the impact of it is in general. Yeah, well, one thing I'll say up front is, so um, uh, we just added last month a new feature to En-ROADS, uh, which is, to, uh, is a way to test the clean electricity standard. Particularly for people in the United States, you may have heard a lot about this recently. It's uh, being talked about within uh, President Biden's platform of what action they might be taking. Um, and we're seeing a lot of climate groups advocate for this idea of a clean electricity standard. So um, this is, a, again, another way we try and approach things is we try and add things into En-ROADS that are um, topics of conversation out there in the news. How can we make sure this is relevant to um, current dynamics? And how can we help people think about uh, an action, a, a policy like the clean electricity standard and how it fits within the mix? So um, you can go into En-ROADS and under carbon pricing, uh, you'll find a section about the clean electricity standard. Maybe someone on the team, you can find a, do we have the webinar that Drew did about the clean electricity standard and sure. um, yeah, put that into the chat. That would be great. Um, and you can watch if you're if you're interested in the clean electricity standard, watch that um, and go in deeper. But one thing to think about what a clean electricity standard is is it's saying that for electricity. So here's a here's an important distinction. Um, electricity is only a portion of our total energy use. Think about your car. Uh, if you don't have an electric car it's running on oil, that's energy being burned that isn't electricity. So the clean electricity standard only applies to the electricity sector. Um, there are people discussing it, a whole clean energy standard. Um, mostly when I've heard um, the administration in the United States talk about it, they're really framing it with this electricity view, which gets at utilities, electric utilities. And so then it would say for uh, all of the electric producing utilities out there, um, they would have to use a certain amount of clean energy. And then there would be a certain year in which uh, that they would have to uh, achieve. And forgive me, I've forgotten the specifics of what the clean electricity standard is that, that, that we're advocating for right now. Um, but it would be a proportion of clean energy by a certain date. And so with the feature in En-ROADS, what you can do is you can say, well, how, what qualifies as clean energy? Uh, does nuclear count? Does carbon capture and storage count? And you can pick and choose and set your own assumptions for that. Um, so check out that webinar on clean electricity standards. And so clean electricity standard could complement a carbon price. Um, in Within En-ROADS and uh, in other places, carbon pricing could extend across the entire energy mix. Um, in some cases, people talk about carbon pricing extending uh, even beyond to land use uh, emissions and things like that. So this is where um, with En-ROADS, what we do is we provide these kind of broad strokes to help people begin to think about this challenge. But then at the end of the day, if you are really want to get into the policy specifics, turn to other resources. Uh, there's a lot of great work being done uh, around the clean electricity standard, around carbon pricing that gets into all the different nuances, where the financing would come from, who uh, benefits and how, what the job creation levels would be look like that kind of gets beyond the scope of what we're what we're doing uh, but there there are a lot of people working hard on it great thanks Ellie um, yeah. another question was uh, are there any carbon measurement tools that can be integrated with inroads so that businesses and individuals could gauge their impacts or maybe what advice would you give mm -hmm. if someone looking to kind of explore those yeah. things alongside the model yeah we don't have any like um, uh, kind of ways in which uh, business focused tools have built. Actually, that's not true. I can think of there's a financial group that has taken inroads and they've worked some with our development team, but they have also their own technical team. And they have been able to use some of the insights of inroads into kind of a custom financial analysis. Um, and that's entirely outside of our team and uh, for the most part, and they've done some work with that. Um, we, other ha we have other cases where um, uh, the, we've provided the API of En-ROADS. If you're a technical person, you know what APIs are. Um, and uh, news agencies have been able to use it as a way to draw on the results. So for example, 
uh, Bloomberg did a, um, Bloomberg Green did a, a whole post where they made their own little miniature interface that simplified En-ROADS and made it something that was um, accessible to their readers. So those are things that have been done in the past. We're open to possibilities here. You know, the sky's the limit. People have come to us from museums before and uh, we've seen ways in which to integrate the insights. Uh, so there might be something here we haven't explored. Feel free to email us. Um, and uh, if, if you have access to uh, partners that, that could run with something, we've imagined you know, a video game. Like what if there was a video game developer out there who used En-ROADS? I don't know, um, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, but also- um, Ellie, what's the name of the first group you mentioned? Sorry, it's- What was that? Follow-up question on that. The financial, the financial analysis group. I, you know, I don't I, remember the name. Uh, I did not mention it because honestly, I have forgotten it, unfortunately, sorry. It was- I'll go uh, looking for it. <laughs> of, uh, that worked on, yeah, sorry, uh, don't have it at hand. Um, the, the other thing though, I was gonna say, and maybe somebody could find the link to this. We also work with a number of uh, large companies and have done uh, En-ROADS events for uh, corporate sustainability teams that has rippled outwards. Um, we have a whole page on the website about the business applications of En-ROADS. So if this is an angle that you're coming from and uh, uh, we can uh, point you all to that. Um, so, and uh, Chris Page on our team has worked with a number of Fortune 500 companies over the years and is kind of our uh, partnership development person when it comes to the business space. So we can connect you directly uh, with Chris um, if you wanna follow up with any kind of conversations about engaging businesses uh, within Rhodes or, and also in the financial sector too. Um, great, any other questions that have come up? Uh, sorry about that. I was trying to search down that name. And yeah, I think you might have just said that. But yeah, right into support if uh, we're not able to answer a specific question here. Um, I think we're getting probably close to where we can wrap up. There's been more questions, but we've been answering some in the chat. Um, and I think we can probably call it as soon as you're ready, Ellie. Great. Well, why don't we close the breakout rooms? I don't know if uh, people joined breakout rooms and were able to chat with others. Um, um, and there, uh, Chris uh, just wrote into the chat. Um, so if you, uh, like Leslie, for example, I saw that you mentioned connecting on business things, feel free to reach out to Chris. Um, awesome. Uh, so let's close out the breakout rooms if we haven't already. And we'll wrap up here. And uh, in the meantime, hope you all enjoy the videos. Uh, it's a big module this week. We have a lot of videos. Drew and I and the rest of the team worked hard on uh, um, creating all of these videos and quizzes and everything. Um, so look for those and uh, see you all in the community spa space on the learning platform in the meantime. And uh, I think Drew will be back next week uh, along with us and the rest of the team. Um, so hopefully we'll see you all then. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thanks, everybody. Bye.